Hello everyone, uh, welcome to uh, today's class. Before we uh, proceed further, we briefly look at what we did last uh, time and I hope that you had the chance to go through that uh, on your own uh, based on what I discussed uh, in the last class. So what we did was um, a reaction uh, of uh, allyl tin compounds or allyl stannins, what they are called as. So initially we took an allyl tin compound of this kind was reacted with uh, aldehyde say for example benzaldehyde uh, under heating conditions to form the homo allyl alcohol. This required heating but if we uh, uh, look at the reaction that we discussed in which the allyl uh, tin species had a Lewis acidic character uh, like this uh, which was uh, prepared by reacting allyl bromide or allyl halide with tin or tin halide then these kinds of species which have inbuilt Lewis acidic character did not require heating to transfer the allyl group to the aldehyde because there was a chelation between oxygen and the uh, Lewis acidic uh, part of the reagent or the allyl tin compound. And uh, we also looked at how uh, crotyl tin uh, molecules uh, with the specific geometry of the double bond uh, lead to the formation of anti arsine products. Thus, for example, we saw that the E configurated crotyl tin compound led to anti product and Z configurated crotyl tin product uh, led to the formation of syn compound. Now uh, we also saw that uh, if we take uh, a crotyl uh, compound in which the metal part is either zirconium, chromium or titanium, then irrespective of the geometry of the uh, crotyl, uh, this particular double bond here, uh, E or Z, uh, eventually what was found that it leads to the formation of the uh, E configurated crotyl uh, molecule. There is an equilibration between the two of them and then that leads eventually to the formation of antiproduct. Also we saw that crotyl uh, tin compounds uh, whether it is E or Z if it is reacted with uh, carbonyl compound in the presence of a Lewis acid then we get syn product as the major product uh, irrespective of the geometry of the crotyl compound. So this is how we saw a variety of reactions of uh, allyl and crotyl uh, tin compounds and crotyl con compounds containing other metals like zirconium, chromium, and titanium. So we will now proceed uh, further today looking at the allyl silanes for example. Now in the case of allyl silanes uh, of this type here, um, uh, there are many interesting reactions. Uh, apart from of course uh, uh, normal uh, allylations. Uh, the since silicon is more electropositive than carbon, it exerts a considerable electronic effect on carbons alpha and beta to it in an organic molecule. So see for example, if you have a, a silicon here, uh, see you have something like this, then you can uh, expect this alpha position here uh, to be very specifically um, converted to an anion for example. So you can have uh, very easily uh, generating uh, an anion alpha to the silicon. In a similar fashion if you can somehow manage to generate a cation and if that happens to be on the beta position then of course uh, this particular uh, beta carbocation here and with respect to the silicon is also an important uh, kind of uh, contribution for the silicon based uh, reagents and their reactions. So uh, silanes uh, which can be activated in the alpha position lead to stabilized carbon ions and therefore they, they allow the reaction of uh, an electrophile 
to react on that carbon ion. So, so irrespective of whether there is an allyl group or not, uh, if you can generate the uh, anion alpha to the uh, silicon here, then we can expect that the E plus will react uh, in this fashion to uh, give the electrophile uh, attach to the uh, carbon uh, alpha to the silicon group. Now, uh, as I said that you can stabilize the carbocation um, uh, beta to the um, silicon and uh, say you have a substrate something like this here uh, uh, or this is a vinyl silane and you have an aryl silane of this type here say you have aryl, aryl silane or an allyl silane or say alkynyl silane you have here something of this type uh, or this kind of substrate that you have then you can expect that for example this can lead to the formation of uh, a carbocation um, in here if the electrophile attaches uh, to the carbon here. So, we can expect that you have an electrophile attaching and of course, we generate the carbocation at the beta position. So, this is alpha, this is beta. So, likewise in this also, this also and of course, in here also we can generate uh, the cation at the um, beta position uh, which is then stabilized by the, by the <coughs> silicon. So, among um, all others uh, basically uh, different types of uh, reagents uh, generally there is a lot of reactivity with respect to allyl silanes uh, as well as vinyl silane of course. Uh, so, we will first consider the, uh, the uh, anion formation alpha to the silicon in an allyl silane substitution type of uh, starting materials and of course, uh, a, a, and also beta cationic uh, charges both of these charges that we will consider with respect to the silicon and then see the reactivity of it. Now, organosilanes uh, display uh, a very uh, useful um, uh, alternatives or um, attractive properties that with respect to the other organometallic reagents. Uh, these reagents allyl silanes or vinyl silanes are uh, more stable and uh, they are uh, moisture and air stable compared to other organometallic reagents. They can be easily prepared from wide uh, range of starting materials uh, and of course, they have low uh, toxicity with in comparison to many other um, uh, reagents and uh, they actually lead to um, rich and diverse chemistry which uh, can easily be uh, understood and rationalized uh, by a relatively a small number of fundamental properties of silicon. Basically as we have discussed uh, uh, earlier that anion alpha to silicon and cation beta to silicon are stabilized. And of course, we can have uh, transition states which are well defined transition states with respect to cyclohexane chair form and that also helps in uh, uh, rationalizing the product formation. Now, if we simply take a simple uh, allyl trimethyl silane, the basic allyl trimethyl silane reagent looks like this allyl trimethyl silane. Of course, there are many other uh, substitutions which we can uh, think of putting here. So, we can have here anything else not necessary uh, only methyl, but we can also take other substitutions and uh, the, especially this one is relatively cheap and commercially available and uh, is it, it is not a very strong nucleophile unless and until we add uh, an external Lewis acid. So, we these, these allyl silanes are robust, strong and therefore, they can react uh, only in the presence of a Lewis acid. So, suppose we consider the reaction of uh, 
uh, say uh, an electrophile uh, with an allyl silane of this type where uh, it is not necessarily methyl but it can be anything else. So if we react with an electrophile here then the electrophile reacts uh, in this fashion from the uh, gamma position if we say this is alpha this is beta and this is gamma then of course we have at the beta position the cation comes because now you have a carbon uh, electrophile bond formation at the gamma position and therefore we generate a stabilized carbocation here. And then there is a loss of uh, carbon silicon bond that leads to the formation of the double bond here. Uh, on the other hand we can generate uh, the anion uh, alpha to the uh, silicon by removal of proton by, by a base such as n-butyl lithium and this anion then reacts uh, with the electrophile at the, at the gamma position here something like this and this electrophile reacts in this fashion and to lead to the formation of the product of this kind where now we get the vinyl silane. Now the uh, why is the beta carbocation more stable is because there is a is kind of hyper conjugation between the carbon silicon bond and the, and the p orbital which is an empty p orbital at the beta carbon of the uh, substrate on which there is a um, uh, formation of a carbocation after the electrophile reacts and therefore this particular p orbital which is an empty p orbital interacts with the sigma uh, uh, bond of the carbon silicon and they are actually coplanar with respect to each other and therefore there is an overlap like hyperconjugation. Now if we uh, say react uh, this type of allyl silane which is now substituted allyl silane react with uh, acid halide in the presence of aluminum chloride. So we would expect that it would form uh, something of this kind where the uh, aluminum chloride has uh, abstracted the carbon chlorine bond and we generate an intermediate of this type where there is a non-nucleophilic AlCl4- and of course you have a uh, acyl carbocation. This acyl carbocation then reacts with the, with the um, uh, double bond in this fashion here it will come and react here and then you generate a beta carbocation here. Now you, this is the alpha position and this is the beta position and the beta position the carbocation is formed because at the gamma position here this is alpha this is beta and this is the gamma. So the gamma position the double bond reacts with the acyl cation and then leads to the formation of a beta carbocation and now you have the loss of uh, the carbon silicon bond. So whatever nucleophile that is present in the medium say for example uh, Cl- minus or anything that reacts with the carbon silicon bond and of course there is a uh, breaking of the carbon silicon bond leading to the formation of the double bond. So this is how the reaction occurs with an electrophile and that is driven by the stability of the beta carbocation with respect to the silicon. So electrophilic additions of allyl silanes generally occur via an SE2 prime as I mentioned that the reaction occurs at the uh, uh, opposite end of the double bond. So you have something like this here and then you have a silicon see here and therefore the reaction occurs at this position here alpha, beta and gamma. And since this occurs at the uh, electrophile adds on to the gamma position and then this breaks up here and therefore this is called an SN SE2 prime reaction that is uh, at the uh, uh, allylic position. Um, so uh, allyl silanes react with a conformation in which the smallest substituent um, on the uh, carbon uh, is that is attached to the silicon is essentially e eclipsing with the double bond eclipsing the double bonds. For example here as you can see this is the double bond of the allyl silane and this is the smallest substituent of the uh, uh, carbon that uh, contains the silicon and therefore this hyd carbon hydrogen is essentially eclipsing with the carbon carbon double bond. 
Now what happens is when the electrophile reacts with the, uh, with the double bond, the reaction occurs on the opposite phase of the silyl group for steric and electronic reasons. Um, that is now once the smallest group has been oriented in such a fashion that the uh, smallest group uh, has uh, is essentially eclipsing with the double bond, then the electrophile attaches like uh, from the opposite phase of the carbon silicon bond to avoid the steric hindrance. And of course, what happens also is that once we get this intermediate of this type when the electrophile has attached, then there is this small rotation here. The carbon silicon bond rotates here like this here so that there is an overlap between the carbon silicon bond and the p orbital just the way as we saw earlier in order for hyperconjugation type of uh, effect to occur. So, and that leads to the formation of the double bond. So, this overlap of the carbon silicon sigma bond to the empty p orbital of the carbon carbocation is very important and that can happen only by slight rotation around the carbon, uh, carbon bond uh, in such a way that the carbon silicon bond overlaps with the p orbital. Now, uh, we can also do the same thing using some other uh, uh, molecules such as alkyl halides. Alkyl halides for example, uh, especially which can allow the formation of a stable carbocation. So, you have an allylic or a benzylic or a tertiary butyl halides uh, such as say tertiary butyl chloride. So, what we need to do is, is we need to generate a carbocation of this type or we generate we need to generate a carbocation of uh, this type here uh, or we generate a carbocation of this type. So, you have an allylic carbocation, benzylic carbocation or say tertiary carbocation because they are stable and therefore they can easily be produced. So, in that situation if we have an allyl silane of this kind here then what happens is of course is the tertiary butyl cation here reacts with the double bond and uh, once the double bond uh, interacts uh, uh, in, in this fashion here. So, um, what we have done it is, is we have uh, rotated the, uh, the bond here, here in such a way that the carbon silicon bond goes up and now your tertiary butyl group reacts with it and then of course the uh, the um, here this is how it will be tertiary butyl and then we of course get the the product which is like this that means since the carbon silicon bond is pointing upward so uh, the double bond interacts with the tertiary butyl cation uh, from the opposite phase and from below that is why this tertiary butyl group, group has come uh, below here and the we generate a carbocation uh, at uh, uh, this center here and that will then uh, interact with the carbon silicon bond sigma bond to, to lead to the formation of the double bond. This is how the product form. Now uh, the reaction um, of course has to be seen uh, through uh, open transition state and then energies of uh, other conformations have to be considered uh, in each case. So, this is how it happens then the reaction occurs uh, when the Lewis acid interacts with the aldehyde then the reaction occurs via the uh, gamma carbon atom in this fashion. Now, um, the mechanism can be understood if we if we take the um, the homo the highest occupied molecular orbital of the um, uh, allyl uh, substrate then we can say that this is the carbon silicon bond here and this is the double bond and we are talking about the homo of the double bond here and uh, if we take the lumo of the uh, carbonyl uh, group then of course uh, when the lewis acid interacts with the oxygen here then we can uh, write the pi star lumo of the uh, aldehyde in this fashion where there is a there is an interaction with the um, the uh, p pi uh, p 
pi interaction and uh, leading to the formation of the uh, sigma bond here. And then of course, we generate a carbocation on this particular carbon atom, which then of course, when the nucleophile reacts, the carbon silicon bond breaks and then we generate a double bond here. So this is how the mechanism looks like. And this is uh, basically nothing but the beta silicon effect. Uh, and this carbon silicon bond and, and uh, the positive charge, the, the p orbital uh, here, uh, they interact like hyperconjugation. Now, uh, the conjugate addition of, uh, um, of allyl silanes are also possible, uh, although uh, alpha, beta and such aldehydes undergo uh, 1, 2 addition. For example, we can think about whether we allow um, Michael reaction to take place, conjugate addition to take place. So if we have something like this here, an aldehyde and if we react with allyl silane, then of course in this situation uh, generally what is observed is 1, 2 addition um, here of this type. So this is 1, 2 addition. So you have uh, 1, 2, uh, 3 and 4 and therefore 1, 2 addition takes place. This is the 1, 2 addition product. But uh, if we take an alpha beta unsaturated ketone, then there is a possibility of uh, reaction uh, in a Michael fashion in the presence of a Lewis acid. Uh, and that is known as um, you have something like this here, Lewis acid here, and you have here uh, a nucleophile that is added here. So if you have a nucleophile that is added, which is an allyl silane type of thing, so example, you have an allyl silane here as a nucleophile, uh, then of course, we expect the reaction to occur in a, this is what is the Lewis acid. When we put a Lewis acid, we can put a negative charge here and then you have here allyl silane. So if uh, the nucleophile happens to be an allyl silane, that allyl silane can add in a Michael fashion or a conjugate addition. Uh, on to the gamma or the fourth carbon you have 1, 2, and 3, 4. So it is more like a 1, 4 addition and that is where you get an enolate and of course this upon workup can um, lead to the formation of the conjugate addition. So basically it is nothing but a conjugate addition. However, this enolate intermediate, this is an enolate intermediate basically uh, because we can write it uh, as uh, this. Uh, here if we remove the Lewis acid from there, then it would be like uh, this plus Lewis acid. So if uh, the Lewis acid has an interaction with the oxygen, then of course we get the OA Lewis acid minus, otherwise you have this O minus and Lewis acid is separate. Now uh, uh, of course we will always have a counter ion which comes from the nucleophile which is present or whichever. And now if, we, if it is possible, then of course we can either do a deprotonation of it or we can also react with an electrophile here. It's a different electrophile and that can lead to the formation of electrophile here and you can get this. So such kind of products or such kind of products are possible. Here of course you are getting a proton as an electrophile. Here you are getting a separate electrophile which can be either sulfur or a nitro or any other or even a carbon based electrophile, we can get an addition of this kind. So um, uh, there are several ways in which you can uh, perform uh, such a Sakurai type of reaction which is what is conjugate addition or the Michael addition of allyl silanes to alpha beta unsaturated ketone. We can also do it in, a, in an intramolecular fashion. So if we have something of this kind here. So suppose you have an alpha beta unsaturated ketone and you have now say you have uh, allyl silane of this kind here. Then there is a possibility of doing this, um, oh, sorry this is, uh, it should be here of alpha beta unsaturated system and therefore now we can consider as having an intramolecular uh, 
intramolecular uh, Michael addition of allyl silanes or intramolecular what is called as Sakurai reaction. Uh, intermolecular sacculi reaction and that could lead to the formation of uh, uh, this type of product. Now we can see that the new uh, centers uh, which are uh, asymmetric centers which are being created here and therefore there is a possibility of uh, uh, looking at them uh, from the point of view of the various transition states that one can think about it in all these reactions. So there is a, there is a possibility of cyclization uh, which is proceeding via very well defined transition states and therefore the stereoselectivity has been found to be excellent. In all these cases we have to use a Lewis acid uh, and because uh, very less cases the uh, protic acids like Bronsted acids have been used because what happens is if you have an allyl silane of this kind then uh, um, very often what happens is this uh, undergoes proto desilylation that means the, uh, the proton itself reacts with this uh, particular uh, double bond and then one can get the proton addition at this stage here and the reagent itself gets desilylated. So you, you basically have uh, the formation of this. So the uh, the allyl silane does not react with the substrate if we have a Bronsted acid in place of a Lewis acid that has been observed. However, there is an uh, exception uh, in this case um, for example in, in, in fact the Lewis acid was not found to be useful in this case and they, they found that substrate of this kind uh, reacts with methane sulfonic acid at low temperature and that gives a product of this kind in 88 percent yield in which the diastereo selectivity was more than 95 percent. What they um, understood or they rationalized is through a favor transition state. Uh, possibly uh, everything is uh, lined up here and this substrate uh, allows immediately a protonation uh, through the uh, Bronsted acid like methane sulfonic acid to the aldehyde and the aldehyde uh, when upon protonation uh, forms uh, a, a particular part in this fashion which now the, the dipole of this is uh, oriented opposite to the dipole of this particular carbon oxygen bond uh, to avoid the dipole dipole interaction and therefore uh, this um, um, allyl silane moiety here being uh, uh, Z in orientation and therefore the hydrogen here and the hydrogen here are cis oriented because the double bond here is uh, of course also going to be uh, Z oriented here. This is the part which is the double bond part and when this interacts here the hydrogen is uh, uh, oriented above and therefore this and this are cis to each other. And that is where the hydrogen here is uh, cis to the hydrogen here. And, uh, that this particular favor transition state leads to the formation of the product that is rationalized here. So uh, this is an exception but of course in majority of the cases the reaction needs a Lewis acid. So we, uh, we will stop at this stage and we will take up the other aspects of the uh, allyl silane addition next time. Till then you can go through this and if you wish you can see the, the, subs, the, rea, the reference here which I have mentioned and see the details of this particular reaction. Till then you take care and we we'll see you next time, bye, thank you.